This short video is a plan to reduce the chaos in Iraq perpetrated by ISIL or ISIS while keeping American troops at home. The modern struggle is about religion, politics, and boundaries. The vast majority of the world's 1.6 billion Muslims are Sunni in countries like Egypt, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Syria, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. Shia Muslims are actually a tiny minority overall. In Iran and Iraq, Shias are in charge. But in Iraq, that wasn't always the case. There was Sunni rule under Saddam Hussein. Since the U.S. withdrew military forces from Iraq in 2011, Iraq's Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki has made life even more difficult for Sunnis in his country. That's why they don't seem too upset about ISIL's increasing power, and in some cases, are even joining them. ISIS presents itself as a global organization, but it has thrived because of a local cause. The group has gained territory, cash, and recruits primarily because of the rage and rebellion of the Sunnis of Iraq and Syria. First of all, instead of anarchy, they have now law and order. Was ist das, Papa? And people don't like IS, but they like their security. So. Since June of 2014, the World News Apparatus has honed in on ISIL as it's unleashed a terror campaign across the deserts of northern Iraq until storming and taking Mosul, Iraq's second largest city. Images of mass killings, beheadings, and even crucifixions have shocked the world. The name of this tech fury group has seen many variations. ISIS, ISIL, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, Islamic State, SIC and Daesh. This, this group is at once a military force, well organized, run by Ba'athi officers, former Ba'athi officers. Um, they know what they're doing militarily, and it's also a terror group where they killed large numbers of people to, to cause, you know, ethnic cleansing, if you like. People that join ISIL, they genuinely think they're bringing about an end of day scenario. They genuinely believe that they are working on behalf of God. And in late June of 2014, al-Baghdadi proclaimed the so-called Islamic Caliphate, an area stretching from northern Syria across northwestern Iraq to the province of Diyala, just northeast of Baghdad. They want to provoke the United States to bring ground troops to the country. Their main focus is not to come here. They want Americans to go there. As I report to you, Air attacks are underway against military targets in Iraq. President Obama and his three predecessors each ordered the bombardment of Iraq. American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations. 4,489 American soldiers have been killed in Iraq. And those Iraqi security forces, the U.S. spent $20 billion training well, many of them have refused to fight. Uh, we're going to have to find a different way to deal with it. Air, bombing them from the air is not going to work. Clearly, we are not going to bomb ISIL into submission, and sending U.S. ground troops back into battle simply plays into their strategy. We need to find another way out. Let's look back a century and see how we got here. The climax of the First World War in 1918 signaled the death of the Ottoman Empire and a redrawing of the Middle East map. When Germany lost, the Ottoman Empire became the victor's spoils, carved up by Britain and France, who drew new borders with little regard for old ethnic and religious divisions. What is now Iraq was created from three Ottoman provinces, one Shiite, one Sunni, one Kurdish, the same regions that are now breaking apart. This map is the result of that post-World War I European dickering. It completely ignores the Shia, Sunni, centuries-old animosity. Now, some influential voices are reviving an idea floated in the early stages of the Iraq War and at the height of the insurgency when U.S. troops were being killed every day. Stop trying to hold Iraq together. We may be viewing a redrawing of the entire Middle Eastern map. You know, I keep coming back to the question, is it time to divide up Iraq, you know, or come to a political su settlement to take Sunni support, withdraw it from the Islamic State? But 
It's enormously complicated. And I just, what we're going to see now is a continuing war for a very long time. This is about as bad as it can, can get, isn't it? Are we seeing the end of Iraq as we know it? Former U.S. Ambassador Peter Galbraith, now an advisor to Iraqi Kurdish leaders, advocates dividing Iraq into three sections split along religious and ethnic lines. A Shia region in the southeast, shown here in blue. A Sunni region in the north and west, shown in orange. And a Kurdish region in the northeast, in yellow. It's close to how Iraq is divided right now. Is this what we're talking about? Sort of partition, sort of around here, and then Baghdad and down, and then Kurdistan up? This map is a representation of the realities within the Sunni and Shia areas of dominance. You will note that Iraq has been divided into three parts. The Arab Shia state, Sunni Iraq, and Kurdistan. And this is the area currently occupied by ISIS. Also note that Sunni Iraq and the territory claimed by the Sunni faction ISIS or ISIL are very much the same. I just don't see Iraq coming back together no matter how many weapons we send, what sort of air support we provide, it's a lost cause. ISIL wants to create a Sunni Muslim state governed by Sharia law. Let them have their state, whether by international design or more likely the natural outcome of the current fighting, the dislocation resulting from the drawing of those post-World War I maps will be corrected. Who wins a death match between an alligator and a bear? Well, that all depends. If the bear fights the alligator in the water, the alligator will be victorious. If the alligator comes out of the water to dry land, the bear wins. It is critical that you decide where to fight your battles.